Hi everyone and welcome to this quick tutorial on parts. It's been a little while since one of my last video tutorials but in this one we're going to focus on a fairly underused feature in Revit structure which allows us to subdivide items such as walls, columns, floors, ceilings and so on. I'm going to demonstrate this with walls. Now I've got a wall style set up just in here. If we do edit type let's take a look at this wall style so you understand how this is working. So basically what we have here um, are two structural layers 150 millimeters thick and inside that I actually have a thermal air brake of 100 mil thick uh, just using a material called cavity fill. Okay so it's a typical uh, compound wall. What I'm going to do now is draw some walls in perhaps something like this and as you know in section if, as long as you're not in a coarse level of detail, so if you're in medium or fine, you'll actually see the compound wall break up. But obviously what you can't do is select each individual layer. So let's now look at that in a little bit more depth. If we go to the 3D view, there's the same wall. And what you'll notice here is I can select one or more walls. So in this case I'm going to select all three of them, like this. And up on the ribbon here we have Create Parts. So now I've selected these, you can now see that it's blown down the uh, composite or compound wall into separate components and faces. These faces can of course be edited. So I can select one of these faces and you'll notice you don't get any uh, chance of editing this until you've initiated the shape handles. So once the shape handles are enabled, and I'll do this on both of the walls here, or both of these layers, whoops, let's have those both on. Then we can actually take control of this and start to manipulate the data. You can see that we have temporary dimensions to help us. Yeah. So it might be that we have a slab sitting on here. So I'm just going to take both of these down to 250. This one will allow me to lock in like so. So of course if I now go back and manipulate this, you can see the other side is now going to move as well. Okay. Now that's great if you just want to edit one or two um, parts of the wall. If you want to do something a little bit more comprehensive, for example splitting these into different precast panels, then we would use named references for that. So here I'm going to click on the reference plane command. Perhaps I'll draw one reference plane in here. and Then I'll make some copies of this reference plane. At the moment I'm not really too fussed about the uh, positioning and spacings of these. We'll um, adjust those shortly to suit. The critical step here is they do need to be named. So you would have to go through and actually give each one of these uh, reference planes a name. And this is so we can actually then easily identify them in the intersecting dialog boxes that you'll see shortly. Okay, so I'm just going to go through and name each one of these up. Now, bear in mind, um, I'm using uh, reference planes to actually split my panels up. But you could be using things like levels and grids. Um, that's another way of doing it. So, there the planes made. Now what I'm going to do is dimension them. So we'll grab all of those items there and we'll simply make them equal. Let's take a look at the value there. Okay, you can see we've got a bit of an odd uh, odd value there. So of course I could actually manipulate the grid spacings to uh, to make that a little bit more um, uniform. Perhaps something like that. That's good. Okay and now we're ready to split the wall. So if we can select the elements we want to physically split. So it might just be I want to select the inner and outer um, panels and the insulation is going to be added afterwards. If, we're, if these are um, sandwich panels then of course I could split all three areas. Yep, so it's up to you how you select this. What we can then do is come up to the ribbon and divide parts. And then we have intersecting references. Now it's in here that we'd normally select um, what we're trying to uh, split on. If I go to all here, um, so we're seeing all of the named references, we can see all of my reference planes that I've just named in there, as well as grids and levels. So in this case here, I'm just going to select the ones I want to um, split on, which will be these ones here. Okay, and I've also set one up for the horizontal area as well, which is going to um, basically split that on H1. Okay, so there's the split. What you'll now notice in the properties palette over here, we can actually select a profile that we want to split on. 
Um, you can build your own profiles up of course. Once you've selected a profile then you have the option of saying it's a complementary profile or perhaps it's mirrored or rotated. So mine's going to be complementary, I want a 10mm uh, grout gap in between those. And we can see the panelization. Okay, so if I go ahead and accept that, yep, there's the panels. Now one of the nice things with all of this is now when you select each individual panel in here, you can see that we have um, information such as the area, the volume, the length and height of each panel and so on. Um, we can also number these panels up um, however we like. Um, I was using the element positioning tool in here so if I just run that along, um, let's do this um, by element here. Naming convention, so we'll just do that by um, each individual number and we'll run those. Okay, so now as I click through these panels you'll see that each one has an individual unique mark on there. Oops, let's run that again because I had one selected. Um, okay, let's mark those up again. Okay, and we'll replace all. Let's try that again. There we go. So you can now see I have a unique mark for each panel. Yeah. Okay, based on that, once we have a schedule set up, then we can go into the schedule here, and you can see that we have all of our marks set up in here, volumes, lengths, heights, and so on. And then perhaps what we could do there, if we go to sorting and grouping, um, in this example, what I might want to do is perhaps sort by length and then by height. And if I take itemize every instance off, you'll now see that that wraps the schedule up. And of course, now I can actually put in my panel type numbers. Yeah. Yeah, and you, you would have to actually go through and type these in, so you're going to put a, a, a type mark in, if you like, for each individual panel in through here. And of course what I'm doing here is actually now starting to add metadata into this uh, uh, project. So if we go back to our panels here, and we select one of those panels here, we can see all of that metadata within that. Okay, I think as I mentioned before as well that we can exclude parts if required. Yeah, so if we didn't want to show a particular panel, we, we could do that. And as I've said, we can actually split elements down. Not to, don't just have to be walls, they could be floors, um, they could be foundations. Even in place families can actually be um, split and subdivided. Okay, hope that's useful. Speak to you soon.